context with the new scenarios. At the outset, the conference aims to provide some new knowledge and wisdom through scholarly work and discussions on the current theme, contemporary research in finance. For the welcome address, we invite Dr. Gabriel Simon Tuttle, the Director, School of Business Management and Legal Studies, who is also the Director of Internal Quality Assurance Cell, University of Kerala. Welcome you, sir. Thank you and good morning to one and all. The President of this inaugural session, Professor G. Raju, the Head of the Department of Commerce, our most distinguished and honorable Pro Vice Chancellor who is inaugurating this uh, conference day, day presentation, Professor P. P. Ajay Kumar, uh, Professor Vigas from Wollongo University in the, from their Dubai campus, uh, Professor Dr. Biju, all my fellow teachers from the Department of Commerce, delegates from across the country and those who are from uh, abroad, a very warm welcome to all of you. We have been this is the, in fact, this is the 8th day of this conference on contemporary finance research. We have been looking into various themes, right from sustainable finance to the capital markets, behavioral finance, and basically focusing on ways and means to strengthen research in these areas. And we have had a session, seven day session consistently from the 22nd of this month. And today we have dedicating this day totally for conference paper presentations and we have uh, selected uh, 22 papers for presentation and they will be making a detailed presentation on what what is the research that they have done this is the theme of what we are trying to do now my task is to welcome all of you uh, professor raju who is the head of the department has taken keen interest in seeing that this webinar takes this dimension and shape on behalf of the organizers, I extend to Professor Raju a very, very warm welcome. Now, as far as the uh, chief guest of the day is concerned, we have with us Professor Ajay Kumar, who is the Pro Vice Chancellor of the University of uh, Kerala. He has uh, been a constant observer, not just a constant observer, even a participant in almost all the uh, academic and administrative activities of the research. Uh, of the university with more focus on research. Because when it comes to academics and when it comes to research and publications, he has shown keen interest to see that whatever happens in each department, in each center, gets recorded, gets transmitted, and creates some kind of a synergy as far as its implementation is concerned. And he has been a good friend for the Department of Commerce because in all the activities that our department has hosted, he has shown interest to join, encourage, and motivate us. So, on behalf of the organization, organizers, I extend to you, sir, a very, very warm welcome. Uh, Professor Vikas has been with us from the inaugural session, and he is going to deliver the keynote address for today's session. He has started with sustainable finance and has taken us through uh, various dimensions of the financial market, the stock market, and research that can take place with the most innovative, supportive methodology that is uh, what we call congenial or supportive for the capital market. I uh, welcome you, sir, to this uh, session. Professor Vikas, a warm welcome to you. Uh, we have with us the, the chairs of uh, the sessions to follow. Uh, we have with us Professor Hemal Pandya from Gujarat University, uh, Professor Hari Kumar from our own department, Professor Kinari Thakur from Mumbai University, I extend to all the chairs a very, very warm welcome. I also welcome all the paper presenters who have who have lined up for today's session from across the country and even abroad. A warm welcome to you. I extend a welcome to Mr. Biju Avi, who is the, who has been uh, working constantly on seeing that uh, this event becomes a success in his capacity as the coordinator. Uh, the entire team from the Department of Commerce, our faculty members, research scholars, students, and all those who are supporting in hosting this event, I extend a warm welcome to all of you. And I hope uh, the sessions to follow would be uh, live sessions in terms of uh, receiving inputs, giving inputs, sharing inputs, 
And uh, since we are in the online mode, I think each webinar or each intellectual session of this kind is actually a, 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 a forum where we can share our resources, share our thoughts and ideas, and see how we can synergize for future growth. So on behalf of uh, the Department of Commerce, once again, a warm welcome to one and all. And with these words of welcome, I conclude. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for the warm welcome. We request our most valued professor, Dr. G. Raju, the professor and head, Department of Commerce, University of Kerala, for the presidential address. A warm good morning to all of you. Most respected honorable provost and of our university, uh, Dr. P.P. Ajay Kumar, Dr. Vigas Ramaya, Professor G. Simon Tadil, Dr. Biju A.V., Conference Secretary, other colleagues of my department, Professor Dr. Sia Begum, Dean, Faculty of Commerce of University of Kerala, Dr. Hari Kumar, Professor of the Department of Commerce, Dr. Biju T., Associate Professor of the Department of Commerce of University of Kerala, Ms. Leshmi and Mr. Vinu Ashok, and respected chairpersons of different technical sessions, including Professor Dr. Kinneri Thakur from Professor of Mumbai University and the professor from another professor from Gujarat University, dear paper presenters, teachers, research scholars, my dear students and other student organizers of this conference, including Mr. Agil, uh, Ms. Abarna, Ms. Nidhi, Mr. Snehit, Ms. Fagavadi, uh, Ms. Sambuli, and dear on. A warm welcome once again to you all for this international conference held as a part of the 10 day long international workshop currently going on. Professor Simon, in his welcome speech, has made a brief of the process that we are undergoing, and this is the eighth day, and this eighth day is exclusively devoted for this conference day. And in this conference day, new horizons in financial research will be discussed, and we'll get more insight about the already uh, research topic, and we will get more insight about the new areas of research. Our Honorable Pro Vice Chancellor is here with us for his inaugural address, and moreover, we have an international fellow as keynote speaker is none other than Dr. Vigas Ramaya from an Australian university. We all have enriched from his scholarly verse during the last two weeks, uh, last week of the uh, from his technical sessions. And still we are waiting for his keynote address in this inaugural address of this conference. So in between, I have to deliver a presidential address. So I ought to be or to restrict my words, I assure you the same. Dear friends, finance plays a critical function in economies and an area of considerable controversy. Against a backdrop of both volatility in international financial markets and the reform process in many national markets, including India, new challenges are emerging to both theory and practice of finance. It continues to evolve in practice, complemented by research, policy, and regulation. This conference, I wish and pray, would provide updated reviews of contemporary topics in finance. The unconventional monetary policy and banking reforms, implicit bank guarantees, and financial fraud are in various ways associated with rethinks stimulated by global financial crisis. The breadth of topic ranging from financial markets and financial systems to inflation, risk premium, angel investing, venture capital, relationship lending, including Islamic banking, algorithmic trading, peer-to-peer -peer lending, crowdfunding, impact lending, and microfinance, would be benefited from increased research associated with more data and use in practice. The topics of blockchain, cryptocurrency such as Bitcoin, FinTech are the products of recent technological development. The focus of this conference 
is on the development of original thinking in money and finance. Rigorous in its approach, it will pay particular attention to the international and comparative dimensions of finance and will include innovative, theoretical, and emotional work from both established scholars and new generation authors. I think and pray for the same. With this verse, I am coming to the end of my presidential address. Once again, wish all success to this one day international conference organized as part of this 10 day long international workshop. Thank you. Thank you. All. Thank you, sir, for giving us an insight and overview of the program. We are indeed very much honored to have with us the Honorable Pro Vice Chancellor of University of Kerala, Dr. P.P. Ajay Kumar. He's a constant inspiration and support to the university programs and has always found his time to join the same. We humbly request the Honorable Pro Vice Chancellor, Dr. P.P. Ajay Kumar, for the inaugural address. Thank you very much for the invitation, uh, Professor G. Raju president of this conference, Professor Gabriel Simon Tuttle, IQAC director, Dr. Vigas Ramaya, keynote speaker, and Dr. Biju Yevi, organizing secretary of this conference. Dear participants, the Department of Commerce has been organizing several webinars and uh, workshops on divergent topics and uh, i think uh, it is one of the leading departments of our university and one of the most uh, uh, important departments among social science uh, and uh, we find that commerce has been included under social science in many universities and here we have a school of commerce and management together and law along with law. I think it is important for commerce to develop beyond the scope of commerce because I think uh, actually commerce deals with the whole economy. And uh, uh, it is high time that terms like commerce has to be replaced by some other term which will include all the important aspects of the topic or the subject subjects the various subjects that uh, commerce deals with the term commerce deals with in i think in certain universities there are only two important streams one is economics and the other is um, science so commerce also is broadly speaking uh, related to the economy, the whole of economy, all aspects related to economy is dealt by the commerce department. And here we find that the webinar is dealing with one of the extremely important uh, topics of discussion in the post COVID era, because we know that COVID-19, even though it is considered as a, a medical um, experience, we know that it is not limited to uh, the field of health, but has affected almost all aspects of life, including the economy, our uh, business, and every aspect of life. And uh, so we find that in the post-COVID scenario, uh, we will have to think in terms of developing a policy that is totally different from the pre-COVID era. Even during pre-COVID era, I think experts were aware of the kind of uh, developments that is happening in the field of politics as well as economy. And there were many studies about the kind of influence that finance or commerce is having over the elected governments. In one such studies, it is said that we at present 
do not have leaders who can challenge the multinational companies or the influence of the multinational companies because most of the elected governments are being controlled by uh, multi such multinational companies that means it is the interest of the commercial groups that has a kind of uh, say over the interests of the people and it is also said that when you take the leaders of various countries or the leaders who head the governments in various countries it is seen that most of them are of mediocre standard that means we don't have a winston churchill we don't have a stalin or we don't have a roosevelt or leaders with such high potential is absent in the contemporary period and uh, it is argued that it is because our political leadership is to a great extent controlled by the financial capital and uh, only those who will come under the finance the, the desires of the financial capital can rule uh, the countries even though we call it a democracy so this is to a certain extent true because we find that the influence of the financial capital is so high that the policies of the government is being controlled and conditioned by the interests of the finance so recently we have come across several such experiences including the price rise of petrol daily rise of the price of petrol and uh, the, uh, the various other policies including the uh, that of the farmers uh, the, the farming policy so all this shows that indicates that this theory is to a great extent true so i think uh, in the post covid era we will have to think of uh, not only uh, setting right the economy or the finance but also uh, to set right the governments the elected governments in our uh, country not only in our country in all over the world because we find that we should uh, develop governments which has policies in favor of the people not in favor of the the the, the capital or the <clears throat> the kind of multinational companies so that is extremely important in the contemporary field so also the contemporary research on finance i think should address all these issues that are developing uh, in the contemporary period i think for such kinds of research we should have a kind of outlook that is beyond the finance we should have a political orientation i don't mean uh, any orientation towards any political party but uh, it should have a political approach the political view should be the so economy is integrated with politics and uh, the various policies uh, uh, that affect uh, almost all aspects of life so such a kind of uh, approach should be developed by our researchers who work in this field anyway it is extremely true that as uh, 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 the famous philosopher sisik has already pointed out life after covid will be totally different from the life before covid and the experiences uh, of the people uh, will will also be totally different so we need a policy a kind of we have to develop the governments and the leaders leadership and policies that is pro uh, people that supports the desires of the people rather than that supports the desires of the multinational companies or uh, the, cap the, the 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 people who control the capital or the finance so i think uh, the conference will certainly share views related to the contemporary scenario in the uh, in finance and in finance capital and uh, uh, i think it should certainly develop uh, policies 
which will support the people and the, the pro people approach rather than the the kind of uh, policies that supports the finance capital uh, i think these are some of the uh, interesting areas that we should explore in the contemporary period so i wish all success to this conference and i hope that the organizers will make it a point to record the in the speeches by eminent resource persons and will publish the papers in the form of a book which will certainly be useful for the coming uh, generation that means uh, students as well as researchers um, who may join later so thank you very much for the invitation i uh, i am extremely glad to inaugurate this conference and thank you once again for inviting me to this conference thank you Thank you, sir, for the inaugural address. As you rightly mentioned, the scope and the field of commerce is growing, and there comes the importance of such workshops and conferences. We thank you, sir, for finding time with us, even in your very busy schedule. We have with us today Dr. Vikas Ramaya, the Associate Professor at the University of Wollongong in Dubai. and currently teaches international financial management on undergraduate level and portfolio simulation and financial strategy on postgraduate level he is renowned for his works in applied economics and is an expert in international financial management and financial strategy he is a founder of researchers sans frontier network environmental finance cluster at rmit and his research areas are financial markets behavioral finance and environmental finance He introduced the first educational trading room in the state of South Australia. Indeed, we are blessed to have you with us here today, sir. We warmly welcome you for the keynote address. Thank you, and good morning to everyone. Um, and once again, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here and to give a keynote speech. I think I would um, I would probably start uh, following up from what the PVC mentioned earlier. it is important important for us to really tackle uh, really important issues political issues um and in uh, there is an emerging literature called uh, emerging mncs and there has been few calls in the last few months about writing papers so there is a growing interest uh, in this space we see uae is becoming like an emerging uh, mncs in the region whereby they are buying a lot of uh businesses uh in say Egypt uh Turkey etc and um the biggest issue that Africa is facing at the moment is an influence of chinese investors and it is uh, at an alarming rate and um china has been buying in australia for quite some time and the government had to intervene and stop a lot of issues uh from uh, a lot of assets from going back to china so it is an important issue there are some people working in this space uh, i've started looking at some of these problems and um it is well documented in the literature um the problem is referred to as um the dutch disease uh, the dutch disease is the case where um um you know if you take countries like european countries they go to africa they create a war they finance a war and then they uh um uh, when they need the money back once they, they win the war so they have to pay back their debt and that is usually through allowing them to um say uh, uh get money uh, uh get oil out of uh, of africa and then create more civil war so that nobody can steal it send it to europe to refine and then the same african country is buying it back to a european country it is a major problem uh it is the reason for various wars and people um um killing each other so i totally agree with the pvc that we we really need um um some research in this space because i mentioned there's political there's also greed that goes out there and it's important for us to 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 sort of write papers around there now unlike most of the keynote that you you've seen where people present a paper and i thought because of a time constraint of 20 minutes 
I would rather um, just share some of the things that I have done um, as a uh, as a researcher that works in contemporary uh, issues in finance. So I'm just going to share with you how um, we 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 go on every day uh, tackling new aspects that emerge in um, during the day, during the week, during the year, and how we manage to publish them. So, as you know, all of us here are present, and I think academics around the world, uh, we are no longer expected to be teachers, but at the same time, we're expected to be both researchers, teachers, and engagement with a community. So, if you combine these three together, you will have the new academics if you want. Now, um, as we embark on this journey, very quickly, uh, you realize that teaching three hours or six hours a week uh, is not what is uh, the beauty of this work. The beauty about this work is the rest when you go out and uh, try to look at something that you love, uh, you learn about it, uh, you, you, you sort of develop your hypothesis and then you publish it. That is a most exciting part, at least of uh, my job. And in, in doing so, sometimes um, there is some merits to it. Uh, you get you get publications, and the publications. Uh, if if I go back to uh, when I started, just finished my PhD, uh, got an appointment at RMIT, and I was working there as a lecturer. Uh, from the time that I finished my PhD to the time I had my first publication, it took it took about three years, and the first paper was published in the Journal of Behavioral Finance. It took them over two years to review it, and when it came back, um, I had no revision. It was accepted with no revision. The second paper took about uh, at least about the same time in applied economics, uh, and um, um, it was accepted with no revision. So these two first papers, uh, they took a long time, and during that process, I can tell you, uh, I had people just reminding me every day, every morning about, um, publish or perish. I couldn't get uh, promoted because I didn't have enough publications. And if uh, you're about to buy a house at an early stage, the cash flow, no promotion. Um, so clearly uh, publish and perish, publish or perish was a major issue for me. And I think it is for everybody here. On the bright side, I had uh, my head of school at the time, Professor Tony Norton, um, he's no longer with us. And Tony, um, he was a visionary and he said to me, Vic, the future of that academia is publishing. And publishing in um, a low grade journal will not get you there. You need to aim high, even if it is one, two, in every two to three years, you publish one good paper. Uh, in the long term, it will matter. And I have seen other colleagues who, at the time of me having one A, they had seven publications. By the time I had second A's, they had 13 publications. And these people, these colleagues were always reminding me that you, you got to publish a bit more, you got to publish a bit more. And I'm thinking, well, how? I, I'm, I'm doing all the things that I can do. It, it's taking so long to write a good paper. And I can never understand how are they doing it. So I keep thinking they are cheating or something was wrong. And what I did not know uh, at the time being young, the quality and the impact factor, because back then, we were not to uh, we are not looking into quality publications, but then um, Australia set up a uh, research quality framework uh, today known as the Australian quality framework. And we saw for the first time a ranking system and the rec ranking system was doing justice to what was happening to me because me and I presume other, other academics couldn't understand why the other guys were having so many publications in a year when we struggled to, to just get one. And this is typical um, finance um, publications because unlike economics, we don't have many A stars, we don't have many A's. So the chances of you getting in and the culture and finance whereby you, you have to wait, you just have to wait, um, as simple as this. So it takes a long time to, to get it through and um, when RQF came in, uh, they did a, an inventory in the university where I was working uh, at RMIT. And very quickly, I was among the only one who had A's in, I had two A's in, uh, in the department. 
So those guys who were uh, publishing, they were publishing in rank journals, et cetera, et cetera. So very quickly, I was promoted to uh, senior lecturer. And with only nine publications, I was promoted to associate professor at RMIT. And I can assure you, up until now, those people who uh, were publishing in unranked journals, they haven't been promoted to associate professor. I've been talking years later, I mean, 15 years later, they still are down the track because they've established themselves as people who are not aiming at high quality uh, sort of papers. And um, I have also seen a lot of academics, uh, generally all around me, who refuse to uh, to embrace uh, publish or perish culture, and they got fired big time, and a number of people who couldn't deliver on the publication's time were put on um, performance review, given a couple of years, and if they don't perform, they are asked to leave. And I've seen many people who even publish books and were having to lose, uh, leave their jobs. So publish or perish is for real. I have seen it at RMIT where they pretty much sack a number of people because of that. I moved to uh, UDSA, University of South Australia. I've experienced a very similar thing whereby they've just cleaned up the whole department. You walk in, every, every door is empty and everybody doesn't want to see each other because they think I'll be fired next because if I am here and I'm not publishing, uh, so I've seen this culture and Wollongong University, where I am now here, uh, there is, the government is now putting um, a bit of a research quality framework. They are putting um, a number of criteria and they are doing an evaluation at the moment of academics in, in the UAE. And I can feel a lot of uh, problem uh, and a lot of colleagues who are struggling to publish in bees. And these guys are quite scared at the moment about their, their jobs in the UAE. Because remember, it's very easy to let you go and hire, say, a PhD student who's just got one A or two A. And these guys got um, the training to do A's and above. So when they come, they will give you the A's. Whereas if you have somebody who's uh, quite old and doesn't want to venture and do something different, um, this person would, would try not to because, uh, you know, the time horizon is gone. Um, so we see that. So my, 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 my advice to anyone here is take your time. Take your time to do a very deep work. Try to publish it. Um, I, from, from my experience, I find submitting to JFE's Journal of Finance, etc., are very expensive. Uh, the department doesn't pay um, because of it's too expensive. So, and then you get this rejection within uh, 48 hours, 24 hours, and your money is gone. So we, most universities that I worked for didn't have the money to just blow away on a 24 to 48 hour uh, sort of period. So, um, but should we try? We try, of course. So let me show you uh, some of my outputs uh, that I have. Um, and as you can see, I have a lot more A's uh, than A stars. And I've got plenty of bees. In Australia at the moment, the bees doesn't doesn't um, doesn't count. And the reason why I still publish in bees is I write papers for A star, but then they get rejected very quickly. So after I tried say maybe one A star or something, I if I don't see me getting uh, um, uh, some really good uh, evaluation or anything like that, I quickly dump it into an A, float it around, maybe four or five A's, and usually I get lucky. And if after two to three years, I am not getting anything, I've been rejected from almost every A's, a uh, few A stars, then I dump it into a B. I don't usually go to the C's because uh, the paper gets sold very quickly at B. I think it's a very cheap price for, uh, for the papers, but some people prefer not to publish them because they think this is a liability on your CV where you have a lot of bees. But me, in my case, I work with a lot of uh, junior colleagues, uh, students, etc. And for them to have a publication, whether it's a B, C or unranked, um, um, it's good on their CV. So, and it's good for their promotion. 
So I, I do, I do, I do some bees. And as you can see, I've also got some own rank, about eight of them. Uh, you're thinking, why would Vic do that? Well, I usually get invited by a number of, of these journals and they say, Professor, if a guy like you publish with us, um, then other people will service and they will come and publish. So at first it used to be an investment thinking, okay, we're going to help them. And um, very quickly while uh, dealing with them, you realize they are predatory journals. And um, I'll give you an example. One asked me, okay, uh, help me out. And I said, oh, I don't have anything. You're not ranked. And then they, they, they bring in the emotional bit. Come on, professor, you must have some papers that you can't publish. We'll publish them for you. And then, um, and then the reputation of our journal will grow up and then a lot of people like you will be invited and in less than no time we'll have a, a ranking. I said, okay. So submitted three papers there. Uh, they accepted all the three papers within a very short period of time. And then they asked me to pay 1500 um, per paper for publication and they call it uh, open access publication. So I said, no, uh, this is not what we agreed. I'm not gonna pay, my university will never pay. $1,500 for me to publish in an unranked journal. So I said, I'm going to have to re remove um, my, my publication. And said, no problem, Professor. Uh, if you don't want, if you want it, you, you want to remove your paper, it's going to cost you $1,700 per, uh, per, per, per paper. So I said, no problem. Now it's time for you to deal with my uh, legal people. And I just sent an email within maybe five minutes. They came back and said, okay, okay, okay. we will just publish it. So I reported them um, to predatory list um, in, 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 um, in Australia, and they are now regarded as a predatory. So you need to be very careful about these predatory. I know sometimes it's uh, when you are facing uh, your job and you think, okay, I'm gonna pay 1500, get it published, even some bees do that. And we all know who they are. Check for predatory list, don't be on that list. I've seen many colleagues who've paid and then by the time their CV comes in front of me, because I know they are paying, I, 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 I will tell them uh, it's not cool because there's people like me and a lot of people like us who are very honest, we work our best. We don't pay to, 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 to get our work published because this is a wrong signal. It's, uh, it, it's in fact um, um, a, a disrespect to a lot of academics who are doing it the, the hard way. So, as you can see, um, this is some of the story. Now, um, do you need to publish a book? Yes, we've heard about, uh, let's write a book about this or a handbook. Let me tell you, uh, books, you need to really know who the publishers are. If it is a, a highly ranked publisher, you will get, um, it will be counted in, in your CV. If it is an, a, a very flimsy publisher, um, then it may not count. Handbook, it's great for, uh, for, for you to, uh, to write. It, at the moment, book chapters doesn't count in Australia. So it's, um, some people will not even waste their time to, to write book chapters because uh, they don't count. In Australia, it's going around either A or A stars or and we don't like anything, not even books. But things change every now and then and they change their mind. In, in my case, I get invitation to, to publish from, um, from uh, uh, Handbook, and I know some of these guys, and they all say to me, hey, can you please write a piece? And what I usually do with this is I, I take uh, one of my, say, uh, PhD students, and we use this as an, ex as an example to practice, uh, because we get to say a lot of things that we want. So if it is by invitation, you know it's gonna be published, and you can say certain things that you will not be able to say uh, in your traditional journals. So um, with, with that in mind, so I, I, I do teach them how we, 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 we go and say a few things. And one of the guys that I work with, Imad Musa, and he uh, as well is a great guy and I publish a lot with him. So for us, if we, we have something to tell the world and we know it's hard to prove it in, in a paper or anything like that, then we use this platform to communicate our message. At least we have peace in mind after that. Okay, it's off our chest. This is what we wanted to say. And the sort of um, uh, journal that I've published personally, uh, Journal of Banking and Finance and Energy Economics are the A-stars. 
Um, but the outlets that I found uh, that liked our, our contemporary work uh, over time are uh, International Review of Finance, um, Journal of Behavioral Finance, Journal of International Financial Markets, Institution and Money, Pacific Basin, Applied Economics has been very good to me. So I, I'm just citing places where I think if I was successful with uh, contemporary uh, publications, I think you will have a good chance here. European Journal of Finance, International Review of Financial Analysis, Accounting and Finance, Economic Modeling, International Journal of Managerial Finance, Journal of Behavioral and Experimental Finance, Managerial Auditing and Journal, International Journal of Accounting and Information Management. Um, they are Q1 journals. Um, these are uh, journals that are ranked in Europe as Q1, and then in Australia, they are ranked at B at the moment, but every second year or so, we do a revision in Australia. So I am betting that uh, JIC would become a, an A journal soon. So it's already reached a Q1 in Europe. The next uh, round, it's very likely if we push for it, it will go up. So sometimes we, we, we go and, um, and, 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 um, and try to leverage on, say, a lower rank. Great potential journal that is uh, on a B, knowing that they're going to come up. Sometimes a great strategy just to throw it in there, and then it, it sort of comes up. Now, I, I want to talk to you about review of quantity, finance, and accounting, review of Pacific uh, basing, financial markets, uh, and policies. The, the, this journal has got a, a number uh, of other journals like Advances in Investment Analysis and Portfolio Management, and they have about five journals, and it's run by um, a, a very, very great professor known as Professor uh, Cheng Chu Li. He is like the godfather of uh, Asian universities. He has helped so many uh, young academics to get their paper up. So the way that uh, that it works is if you submit your paper, our QFA, as you can see, it's a Q1, but B. Um, review of passive basing, uh, review of passive basing, financial markets and policies, it's a B. But uh, what I usually do is I submit to our QFA some of my papers, and then if if I've tried some A's and doesn't work, I usually just send it to our QFA, and what what this group of people will do is they look at the paper and they'll see what it is worth. So if it is worth uh, some good paper, they will say, okay, I'll publish it in RQFA. If not, they're going to give you a revision and they will say, okay, it's not good for RQFA, it's good for uh, review passive base in financial markets and policies. So um, if it is not good for that, they will say, okay, I've got this other one that is coming, advances in investment analysis. Uh, if you want, I'll publish it. It's not ranked but we will publish it there. Other time, they have handbooks as well that is coming up and they will say, okay, I'll publish it in the handbook. So for me, this is the end of a line and it's, it's a, a nice uh, sort of a network to, to go and submit your paper, particularly if, uh, um, particularly if, you, uh, if you don't have too much money in terms of uh, submission fees, because once you go there, you've paid a submission fee, but then if you get a revise and submit for any one of them, you pay another submission fees, and that's it. It's end of the line. Whereas if you go other places, every one of them is a new um, um, submission fees. Now, everybody's talking about what's out there in the future. I think um, we've, um, if, if, you, if you look at how I work, I, I, I go, when I started my PhD, I wanted to be in behavioral finance. And I dedicate like 10 years, a whole decade around it, making sure I've published enough so that when you say do a Google search on, um, say, uh, behavioral finance Australia, my name will come in the top, you know, on the first page or so. So then I, I, I moved away from um, um, behavioral finance because I've already made a name um, in, in the field. Then I started something else called environmental finance. So 10 years later, a decade later, if you Google again environmental finance, you'll probably see me in the top few pages. So I, I try to uh, start up something new. And the reason why I do that is I, I don't like to work with fads. Uh, fads were fads are, are topics that everybody's working on. 
And because everybody's working on it, it's quite difficult to publish because everybody knows everything about it. An example in the finance area uh, is momentum trading or contrary and investment strategies. So don't get me wrong, I, I, I got sucked into it myself uh, and I've got a couple of A's, a few, few good papers in, in there and they, 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 they do get published. Uh, there is a general um, um, demand for it because a lot of people publish around it, but at the same time to show your contribution makes it very, very, very difficult because everybody else knows everything inside out before you even submit, they know what you're doing because they attended uh, your conference, etc. So it is overly uh, uh, researched, whereas me, I try to find a niche market where nobody else goes into and then I do my thing. You've got really good contribution and it's easy to get in the A's and sometimes A stars. And one area that I am trying to boost, and I've been trying, I've got like that two or three PhD uh, uh, students coming out, and we call this area health finance. So we've done some work on cancer, etc. And then now with COVID, we're saying there's a massive demand and uh, call for papers for COVID-19 uh, COVID papers. So I'm thinking uh, health finance is another one. Past 2013, we've seen a massive increase in fintech. So I would just like everybody else, and you've got it right, cryptocurrency is the next go. Now, the only thing that I'll add is governance. Governance, uh, because of um, Basel Committee, has asked bankers to set up a good governance policy, risk management policy, and they now, um, the IFRS is having, say, uh, some framework around integrated reporting. So this is coming as a new thing. So you may want to look at integrated reporting, which is also linked uh, to sustainability, which is uh, uh, the, the hot topic to be. And I've seen many of your uh, presentation today is heading into this direction. And many of the people introducing us uh, today mentioned sustainability. And it is, in fact, a good area. It has got 17 dimension, and I can tell you, I have started working and doing some research, apply some fundings around this theme, and I have done some research around which companies and how many of them do we target. So what we are finding is, out of these 17, um, of these 17 dimension, a lot of organizations will tick maybe three or four. If you are really good at it, you'd be somewhere around 10 or 13. And generally you find a lot of companies somewhere around the eight, ticking eight of this. So it is just a start, but um, if, if, you, if you look at what it is asking us to, to, to research, you will also notice that this is what uh, a lot of reviewers are asking. So if we take uh, SDG three, which is good health and well-being, so you will find um, COVID-19, uh, cancer, et cetera, fits well here. And uh, if you've been seeing some calls, they talk about gender equality, particularly uh, the effects of having women in, in board of directors, et cetera. This is becoming like a subject of uh, good research. And here you are, you've got one. Uh, if you look at, say, uh, climate change action, so we're talking about environmental finance, right? Um, life on land. Um, and peace, justice, and strong institution. This is what the Chancellor uh, of the PVC was uh, mentioning. So you need to have stronger uh, institution to, to support your client. So if you take uh, each and every one of them, they are so good in terms of, uh, it's a fertile so uh, soil for publication. And I think if you can start relating your work and making it count at, as one of these, because these are our priorities, and this is where a lot of calls are coming. So you, you can really make a, a good contribution in here. Um, like me, what, what I usually do um, when it comes down to contemporary research, I, I want to contribute to a chat or a debate that is uh, uh, going on at present. So if I turn on the news and something made up international news, and I see people talking about it, it reaches, say, uh, your taxi driver talking about it. So we have a, a leading indicator. So if you go into a taxi 
and your taxi driver is talking to you about cryptocurrency, you know the mass is onto it. And if the mass is onto it, that means everybody wants to know about it. And that's when I go for the kill. I go, okay, people are talking about it. My wife is talking to me about it. So everybody that you see, have you heard about this? Have you heard about that? Then you know, okay, so what does the stock market know about this? What does the commodity market knows about? It? What does anything? So I just look at, say, a particular call for paper, if there is something, so I bring in that flavor. Over time, uh, and I pro probably talked to you about this uh, during a workshop, over time, as you can see, uh, these things happen uh, in a timeline. After 911, a lot of uh, people were talking about terrorism, so we published about that. 2004, uh, tsunamis, so we published around there. Recently in Australia, there's bushfire, we published about this. Again, in 2008, we have high frequency trading, we, 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 we publish around. Banking regulations keep changing over time, we do that. Financial regulations, political election is, is one, and I think um, your PVC mentioned, uh, let's do something about politics, and I totally agree with, uh, with him. So if you just look at the effects of politics on the stock market or the, uh, any kind of market that you do, you will have uh, uh, something uh, to publish. Brexit, and recently we've had what? Uh, the US-China trade war, and uh, we've uh, the uh, stimulus package, healthcare expenditure, it's opening up a number of opportunities for, for, for us to, to do research. And I would say, watch the news, People are talking about it. You've got something clever and smart to talk to the rest of the world. That means uh, people would like it, people will publish it. Just make sure that people trust your work and the only way you, they will trust your work if you have been thorough. Don't rush, take your time, do it well, and it's very likely that you will get um, a good publication. In terms of um, a journal ranking system, I will tell you a bit about a ABDC list, ranking list. So this is a list that uh, we had some people sharing it. And I, let me explain to you the background of, of how it works. And sometimes it's good for Australians and it may not be good for other people. Let me explain why I say so. So in Australia, as you can see, we, we live in our community and our community has got problems. And these problems, when, when we, we, we face them, we, we write about them and we try to publish it in the Journal of Finance, JFE, etc. So when we send our papers there, they realize, hey, uh, this issue was in the US 10 years ago and it's very well documented, so you have no contribution. There's nothing that we can learn from Australians. So very quickly, you'll, you'll see a lot of Australians um, um, uh, don't publish in Journal of Finance or JFE because... Uh, uh, our issues are not the issues that Americans uh, sort of want. Then the question is, why do I not do work about the US? Well, that's because I am an Australian academic. I get paid and subsidized by the Australian government. I'm supposed to take care of the problems of my community. So I would do that as opposed to get a journal of finance and then leaving my country people uh, and my society behind. So we, we, we go and do that, and very quickly we realize, okay, so now we, we have a list of uh, journals that doesn't like Austrian uh, papers. So what we do sometimes, we just downgrade them. Uh, we say, okay, but you don't like us Austrian, you don't like our paper, so we will rank you a C or a B, as simple as this. And other journals that are good to us, uh, we can uh, give them a good rating because we publish there, we know the quality, we know our quality is good, so we, we put up on there. So very, very quickly, you'll see that um, if, if a journal is trying to give me a hard time for any reason, and when I was at UniSA, my dean will write to me and say, Vic, uh, I'm, 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 I'm on the dean's list, and I'm going, I'm going to have a meeting, and I have been asked to find out which journal needs an upgrade, which journal needs to be downgraded, and which journal needs to be on the preparatory list. So I am... When I was at UniSA, I was the one preparing that list for my uh, dean that will go, and because she trusts me, she will go and try to sell it. And you will see that this gets, uh, this gets impacted in the decision because this is what we think, and it happens. 
So as I'm in Dubai, I, I don't get to work on on um, on the list anymore. But I have other friends. If I have any query, I'll tell them. Look, this is a journal. We're having problem with them. Uh, this watches journal. It's amazing. I had an experience with them. It's lovely, like a journal of uh, behavioral and experiential finance. It uh, it got an A, even though it's a re relatively new journal. Uh, they accepted the paper for me, and they were very professional and they were very deep. And you could see that this got so much potential. In no time, it got an A from Australia. It got also got a Q1 in Europe because sometimes you see quality and you go for it. So that's ABDC uh, ranking system. It's made for and tailored for finance academics in Australia. There is a parallel with ABS or SGR. They do it for the same reason. And then not just that, there is a high correlation between ABDC, ABS, uh, SJR, uh, which is Kimago. And the reason is you cannot deny that journal finance is the best journal in the world. You cannot deny GFE is not among the best. So all the ranking system would, would feel really highlight the ob obvious one. But the non-obvious one is um, is, is what we, we, we try to uh, tease out in the ranking system. Having said that, my question is, why would uh, Indian academics follow an ABDC? Why would you follow an ABS? Why would you uh, follow the SJR? Well, it, like I said, it has some hacker relation. It gives you an idea. But why not have an Indian ranking system? KR University wants quality. You want contemporary. And you've got a whole bunch of people here today why not have an Indian ranking system? And then you can identify the people that doesn't like Indian papers. So you can downgrade them and don't give them too much rank. And that will teach them a lesson to, uh, to download uh, your work. And then if there is one that is very cool with uh, Indian publications and they are very sympathetic to the issues that is going on in India, well, give them an Easter, make your own Easter. Uh, and, and as long as you guys agree among yourself, I think uh, one can can do that. If you ask me what are the best journal papers, uh, I will say I told you before, Journal of Finance, uh, JFE, JFQA, Review of Financial Studies. Tell you the truth, I've never been rejected in Journal of Finance because I've never submitted one there. Uh, JFE, I think I started, but then I saw the cost I never submitted. JFQA, they've rejected me before. Uh, I haven't tried Review of Financial Studies. I've got one hit in the Journal of Banking and Finance, and usually when I look at a journal, um, I also look at the history, which is how far back uh, they've been. And if you, if you check these five journals, they, they have a history of uh, being established in the 1970s, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So here are my best journals. Um, and do I want to publish in any one of them? Anytime. Is it hard? Very hard. And because of that, you see me sometimes uh, I move away from them because it's very, very hard to get in there. And I publish in energy economics because I am in Dubai, there's energy, so I can publish around there. Uh, that will work for me. At the moment, I have like three or four into A stars, uh, revise and resubmit, and you name it. But even on a third revision in an A star journal, uh, there's no guarantee. Uh, it takes years sometimes, and you can get knocked out just like that. So until it's not a done deal, you cannot rest with these good journals. There are other journals that I find um, quite interesting to work with, Management Science. Uh, there's a lot uh, of others in ASTARS. You may want to look at them. And the way that people uh, look at me and they say to me, Vic, you are the guy that would go out there and publish a lot. So there are others that will publish one every five years, and then it will be one journal of finance one JFE. And then they are my kind that will publish maybe three or four uh, A's in a year. And then um, it's consistent, three or four A's in a year, few B's here and there, and you publish like nine, 10 papers a year. So, and then occasionally every five years you publish, I mean, five, six years you publish one A star and you move on. So there is a demand for people like us. There is also a demand for people who just like to publish in journal finance. Um, so it varies on the institutions you work, and it also varies on how much money the university has to support your research. 
So if you were to go general finance, it's a lot of money and you're looking at say four or five years, trying there and sometimes you may not even get into the window because they take, uh, they, will, they will just reject you over, over, overnight and you try all the others, you will see it's equally hard and you can go with five years and remember you are, you are really facing a, a, a very fine line of publish or perish. People would say, okay, what's happening? And the stress level that would be in your head uh, would be quite high. For me, I cannot deal with that stress level. I need to secure my my my, my job. I need to make sure that um, my family is not worried about my job uh, security. So that's why I, I choose to do what I choose to do, which is I hit uh, three, four A's a year. Everybody's happy. I get rich, uh, research awards. I get a good money. I get paid above load, you name it. So I am happy with what I do. For you, when I say do your research, Think what makes you happy and just pursue them. On that note, I will say that will take me to the end um, of my presentation for today. And I would like to thank you for listening to me on my keynote speech. Thank you, sir. Though virtual conferences have limitations, it was only because of sessions like this we got a chance to interact with international resource persons like you, sir. Thank you, sir, for giving such an insightful session. Indeed, it was a very useful session for researchers like us. It was very great to have you with us, sir. Thank you once again on Department of the Commerce University of Kenya. Thank you, Akio. Thank you. Thanks. Now, we request our dearest Dr. Biju Avi, the Organizing Secretary, Assistant Professor, Department of Commerce, University of Kerala, who has put his sweat and blood into coordinating this event to propose the vote of thanks. Yeah, thank you. I have taken the words of uh, Dr. Vigas Ramaya. The research will make you happy. Uh, so we are extremely happy to have our university provide chance because you are with us for the inaugural function of the conference. Uh, during this hectic work schedule, his presence itself is our blessing. Uh, and the Vice Chancellor uh, have, have made a comment on the term commerce has to be replaced with some other words. Uh, now, what is lacking is the article base. He rightly said something about the commerce discipline. He raised a new debatable topic uh, the governance and governments are controlled by the multinational companies. Again, uh, this is going to be a hot topic in uh, in publication work and uh, similarly Vikas uh, also told like this intended regulation of the government uh, is killing or promoting companies in his uh, lecture like the regulation part uh, so I thank you the pro vice chancellor uh, for the presence uh, then the person who is very smart and punctual be in time with us always and deliver three well structured well crafted lectures is none other than Dr. Vikas Ramaya. Today we have uh, more knowledge on publication ideas. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's, it, it, it will give new wisdom to the participants. Uh, I know the participants have many value additions through uh, Vikas lectures. Two years back, Vikas done a JAN program at Mangalore University, which was an excellent program, was resulted in making of good papers by the participants after that program. So I noticed usually people who are attending Vikas sessions may produce and publish papers after that, capturing the spirit from the sessions, hoping this group of participants will also be produce some A star or A or B papers. Uh, I thank uh, Dr. Vikas Ramiya for the presence throughout our program and the, the, the excellent keynote address uh, delivered today. Uh, I thank my head of the department for the entire cooperation and guidance, even though he's a part of the organizing team. Uh, the program is special to us. The head of the headship tenure uh, is coming to end uh, in this month of June. So Professor Simon Tatil, uh, who is a strong pillar of our department, we are very proud as working with him and always observing his words if he is free to talk with us. Experience a lot from him so far in my career. But unfortunately, we cannot get him as free. I hope that he will come back to the pure academic soon. Uh, I express my sincere thanks to the uh, Professor Simon Turtle. And uh, our dean is here, Professor uh, Rasia Begum. So I thank uh, Professor uh, Rasia Begum, ma'am, uh, for 
her presence and the chairs of the coming sessions are here uh, professor kinnari takur and professor hemal pandya uh, is there thank you thank you uh, and i should thank the ender scholar community uh, who help uh, this process uh, thank you all and uh, i thank the uh, ender participant who joined across the country and outside uh, uh, for the attention of our sessions you are the key, key factors to determine the success of the program uh, i am not uh, going deep because we are running short of time so the next technical session will going to start right now so thank you all i uh, hope you have a wonderful uh, conference and the, this conference will be a platform to discuss uh, new hot debatable topics under finance thank you all thank you sir with this we have come to the end of our inaugural session of the conference we are straight away without waiting for any further ado we are moving on to our conference and for the tracks now for the first track we have with us two chairs dr gabriel simon tatul and dr hemi pandya dr gabriel simon tatul is a professor department of commerce university of kerala he worked as a coordinator of the major research projects of government of india undertaken by the department of finance and sap project approved by uti for the department moreover he is a former general secretary of the indian accounting association and the current chief editor of the indian journal of accounting currently he is a director of the internal quality assurance salem university of kerala and the mentor advisory board of kerala on chairdi we have with us dr hemal pandya professor at school of commerce gujarat university she took her phd from veer narmad south gujarat university surat she has published 20 journal articles and is a woman with an adorable skills talents and personality on behalf of the department of commerce i welcome both of them over to the chairs for the comments <laughs> 